Mm. We've got Doug Stanhope outside the uh, door. Yeah. Coming in, joining the program. <laughs> dressed dressed all nice. Yeah, he dresses like that now, man. He dressed like that when he was doing your. Uh, yes. Here he Anti-social. is. Antisocial. Doug Stanhope. Hey, Doug. Hello. Got a suitcase with him. Why do you got a suitcase with him? Came you? right from the airport, didn't you? Are you running oh, away, no, no, Doug? No, that, that was uh, from the anti-social uh, virus tour oh. in Atlantic City last time I saw you. Oh, your merch. Yeah, I left merch that uh, oh. Kenny Wait. has kept this whole time. Wow. That's the, a year. Oh, it's over a year. It's a year Jesus and a half. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, so he just gave it to me, and I thought it would be fun to carry it in. That is a uh, long time. <laughs> yeah. You didn't want anyone to ship it to you? It's a, yeah, it's a, it, DVDs I don't really give a shit about. <laughs> oh, <laughs> All right. Okay, there you go. Yeah, I really needed it. <laughs> How are you kids? Oh, we're good. Fucking Ugh. couldn't be better. You're a zany dresser, man. I'm a, you yeah, got no, a look. I've, I've Doug Stanhope's got a look. tilt on old leisure suit shit. Yeah, yeah, that's like old leisure suit. I'm old yeah. enough now that people don't know if you're kidding. Like, right. If, if I was 25, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, remember yeah. I used to have a suitcase. I don't know if you remember this, Norton, but I came to New York City one of the first times I came here, and I had an old suitcase like that. But flowered? Yes. Yellow flowered yes. suitcase. And I go, I'm going to New York City. I'm going to, like, a handle bag. Oh, my like God. Like a Pan Am flight attendant would have. <laughs> right. Walking around and New was, York I, City. And I was skipping. <laughs> remember, I'm going to take this and I'm going to skip through New York City, and I did. <laughs> Just looking but like back a then mark. You look, oh, oh, he's trying. You were nearly I'm old. I can wear a fucking '70s suit like this, and people go, "I don't think he's fucking around." It doesn't no. look bad on you, though. I, mean, I like the white lapel. Right. Is good. The color, bright is yellow so, yeah. shirt, and a kind of a yellowish striped tie, and a, a brown and white checkered. A uh, pair of slacks, a pair of white slacks. kegs, yes. oh. and uh, kind of a... a yeah, pair. that's the problem. I had to wear the Converse because I had oh, to walk okay. down here, and I felt, ooh, well, I'm not wearing the fucking Stacey Adam. Why describe it? Well, we white I would wear bucks. Like what about the like the old white like uh, loafers, right? Yeah, that's what I usually wear, yeah, but yeah, I had to yeah. walk here, so yeah. I put on the fucking... Doug, on. why, why describe it when we can tweet it? Give me... Oh, exactly. Stand out for a second. Stand tweet up for a it. second. All right, here we go. We're, we're, we're going to be on. tweeting a lot. I have, a, I have something I'm fucking... Oh, I can't wait. I've, uh, yeah, I follow you, absolutely. <laughs> Fucking great. Yeah, but you don't respond to the fucking direct message when I said, hey, can I uh, come in the f fifth or the sixth? Uh, you know what? The fucking direct. I miss so many direct yeah. messages because I just scroll. Like, I'll cut out entire chunks of Twitter. Like, if I go to sleep and then I wake up, I'm not going to go through like I that know, many. I, 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 so I just <laughs> I'll go like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my Twitter life at this hour. A I'm confident forgetting it. me would say I do the same thing. But uh, the usual yeah. day to day <laughs> me goes, oh, they hate me. Finally, they caught on. No, they we don't fucking love having you on. No, mm. of course not. Uh, yeah. yeah anyway. How's um, where are you from? Um. Worcester, uh, Massachusetts. That's why I'm like, I fucking put, I'm yelling at Roland when you're talking about the fucking bomber guy. Put me in. Put me in. Put, put me, me in. in. I want to talk about this. I'm from there. It, uh, yes, I'm from Worcester. I made I some you were from goofy what, Bisbee comment or? on. Oh, no, he's I living in, in Bisbee, those, Arizona. Bisbee. But I'm from Worcester, oh, okay. Massachusetts, where the fucking bomber's body is. Yeah. And like, it's such a silly, who gives a shit what you do with the remains? It has nothing to do logically with what, oh, it, oh we'll bury him outside of the Boston area. Where is that? Where do you draw that line? <laughs> Northampton? And they're going to go, what? We're no. the fucking piece of shit? <laughs> right. like, yeah. I mean, get him out of Massachusetts you... in general. Okay, so you just, just go over somewhere the border. Else. Right. The point is, it doesn't matter. It's yeah. a dead it's fucking... It's just meat. Hunk. Yeah, it's rotting meat, meat now. It's, uh, mm. it's, uh, it's yeah. waste. Yeah, yeah. It's just product. Everything that made him but the bad guy the thing, is CNN. Gone. <laughs> uh, my father died. Like everyone does. He's meat. He's waste. He means nothing. Uh, he ha we have him in a cup of ashes that my brother keeps for, yeah, just to in case we want to Keith Richards uh, snort it with Coke yeah. one day for funny. <laughs> uh, but he had a cemetery plot in Paxton, Massachusetts, Worcester suburb, that we never buried him in. Who gives mm -hmm. a fuck? We're not going to go through some stupid ritual. Right. And drive out there to leave flowers for no mm -hmm. reason. We have a cemetery plot. That is available oh. for free for the meat that used to be a guy accused of bombing the fucking Boston Marathon. 
We are giving that up. It's at the Worcester County Memorial fucking cemetery place in Paxton, Massachusetts, where we had to live for three years as kids, where they fucking hated us and we hated them. They're all the kids who wore uh, Levi corduroys when we were still in tough skins. And it's just this <laughs> piece of shit, snotty fucking cunt town where we had to fucking all the hate that I have in comedy is rooted somehow in this town. Paxton, Massachusetts, like the people that, you know, you hated and you felt belittled by. You don't know names. You don't remember events. It's just but you the know, entire. Just that three years yeah. where my mother was married to that cocksucker that we <laughs> had to live in this shitty town. Yes, I want to smite you by putting the fucking. And I'm dead serious. I called my brother. He looked it up at 6:30 this morning to find out the name of the cemetery. We'll fucking bury you in my dad's plot. <laughs> Suicide bomber guy. It's fucking you on want the him table. Dumped in there. Yeah. No shit. Call the press. Yes. Call AP. And we have to. Ju all we have to do is <laughs> use the Doug Stanhope. This is where that idea came from. The Doug Stanhope Celebrity Death Pool, we have a logo that came from the idea where my brother and I are saying, hey, we still have Dad's cemetery plot, and there's nothing in it. We're not going to bother putting his ashes in there. Uh -huh. He doesn't care. We don't have, like, an extended family that has reverence for the dead. Let's go put a, a gravestone that says, I'm with stupid with the finger pointing up. Just oh, that's to pretty good. Other people yes, going that would to... be very offensive. So if I can use that gravestone, <laughs> yes. You, you that would, would be you... very offensive. Well, we Does anyone a place know how to guy. pronounce that name yet? Not really. Oh, no, yeah. trying. no, no, no. Yeah. yeah. He'll never go down <clears throat> in history. No, it's not a Lee Harvey Oswald. Exactly. That's easy. He has no middle name. John Wilkes Booth. Yeah. Well, once you have a, a name with two names that are that difficult to pronounce, yeah. you don't try to throw the middle name in. Tamerlan, Tamerlan like, uh, Tamerlan. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. There you go. The brother's a harder one, because it's Zucar or some shit, D-H-Z, yeah. D-K-Z. Yeah. Oh, but this is a little crazy. Mm. Yeah, even fucking Timothy McVeigh. It's yeah. an easy name. You know. Can we get well, the guy from the funeral home on the on the horn? Oh, let's, you know what? We, Come get him over there. Let's do that. Here's why they don't want it, though, because they get the vandalism. They know that they're that afraid it? Doesn't matter. We own that fucking plot. That's real estate. You can That's put whatever you want in there. I'll 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 make a court battle out of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad paid good hard money for that chunk of six by four or six by three. I don't know it what size. It is odd that a cemetery could really dictate what gets buried in there when all you're burying is fucking like yeah, the waste product of yeah. of a life. Right. Yes, and and they have a say like no. It's biodegradable. No. It's green. Do you know who he used to be? <laughs> yeah. I'm not hey, putting him in here. Hey, do a Google search of all the other horrible people that are buried right. in Massachusetts. Maybe right under your feet. Yeah, there's, exactly. There's, a lot of them. there's probably some pretty bad I'm motherfuckers. Gay. Wait, we got to get the funeral home on the line. Yeah, I want to have it a conversation be an with issue the guy. If the media didn't make it an issue, right? It's not like anyone was sitting around going, "What are they going to do with the body?" Well, hey. let's put on CNN to find out what they're going to do with the body. What about that you guy? You wouldn't give a fuck. They made you give a fuck, faggot. Yeah, you <laughs> sit there like a fucking pimple going, Ooh, I don't know what to hate. Oh, CNN just told me. <laughs> what are they going to do with the body? I was worried about that myself. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you. That's why I'm drinking this morning. Every time I come in here, I come in as the wrong person. I'm selling the wrong show because I come in sober. I get a er, uh, good night's sleep. Yeah. I get to do O and A tomorrow. Yeah. Why don't I get to bed by one in the morning? <laughs> right. Oh, no, fuck that. I come in yeah. all sheepish. I go, I'm never going to be as funny as Norton. That's all I think about. Oh, my God. I do your show. He's fucking tweeting the whole time on the show. He's sitting there texting and tweeting, and then still aside out of the corner of his mouth, the funniest comic you've ever been around <laughs> live, and he's not even paying attention. And I just sit here sober going, eh. That's, well, this so morning that's not I came in there. fucking hammered. Well, that's the, not uh, coffee in there, huh? Yeah. yeah, no, this is, yeah. That's a, what are you drinking? Uh, ruby red gray. Grapefruit with, well, three shots of vodka. Ooh. Well, piecemealed out. I drink some. And I right, right. More you put a little more in. A little more vodka. Yeah. So I don't the know. mix is your drink kind I of a thing. Know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God bless you. Did you sleep last night? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, Hey, who the fuck? Where the fuck is that guy in Massachusetts buried that fucking What's killed his mess? killed his wife and oh, then fucking oh, uh, like Charles... said the black guy did it? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. jumped what off was... the fucking bridge. Was Charles River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's guy. the guy's name? Yeah. Charles Stewart? Stewart? Charles Stewart. Charles Stewart. Yeah. Yeah, I want or... I want the outrage. Call in with your outrage about that guy being buried. 
Yeah. Or near Good your point. relative or in your state, you Let's fucking get asshole. The funeral home he doesn't on the line. sound like a very nice fellow. We're trying? What funeral home is it? Um, Let's see, it's, it's in the stories. It's, yeah, it's in all the stories. Let me see. Uh, God damn it. If I could call my brother and get some names of fucking kids from Paxton Center School that were such dicks. I, like, my <laughs> brother went through some serious shit. And I, I'm, I'm like, I, 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 there was, in the last year, I go, give me names. I'm not fucking finding huh. these people. I'm finding them. Uh, hold on, hold on. It's good to have lists. Hold on, we're gonna try to oh. get uh, this done. So it's Graham Putnam and right, Mahoney Funeral Parlor in uh, Worcester. And the guy we is want like to get him on the line. in Worcester. If you read about the guy, the guy has gone out of his way to bury poor people, like people oh, yeah. who are indigent, uh, a lot of Hispanics, and they have a lot of reverence for the like that whole fucking <laughs> Catholic shit. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this, this, a lot of ritual this need be done. Mm. Yeah, this is where my dad got his fucking catheter when he had cancer. It's oh, not God. sacrosanct land. <laughs> yeah. Fucking idiot. <laughs> this, this doesn't matter. It's... They took care of him, uh, according to Muslim rule, I guess, the father or something. Uh, no, the uncle. No, the, the uncle. uncle. The uncle took care of him. The and he had wash and washed the body. You gotta wash you gotta wash his it. genitals. Well, yeah, that's what they did with Osama bin Laden, allegedly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we gave him a respectful what? funeral. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Well, how, what does this guy have to do? Kill right. more people? Yeah, but but yeah. if you're responsible for washing the body, are you going to do a good job? You're going to make sure he has a, a clean ass. You got to wash his balls and asshole of the yeah. dead terrorist yeah. guy. You got to wash on yeah. the, the scrotum and around the scrotum. Yeah, and the you got to lift it up. Get under Harder. the undercarriage. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Are you, you going to do a good washing if that was your job? No, you think? I'm, I'm not, it's not my <laughs> fucking religion. It's not my business. No, I'm just saying if you had to. Would oh, you do this? Never. Just If you were, say, washing like bin Laden's body, even if you're not gay at all, just to kind of humiliate it, would you lean over and suck the dick a little? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I thought you were going to go with poke his honey no, with a I finger. Would, you know, in the England kind of way. Fucking Abu Ghraib kind of way. Thumbs up. Dick in the mouth. Yeah. Thumbs up on a Polaroid. Like, uh, she looked like John Larroquette. I love Linda <laughs> England. <laughs> <laughs> See, gonna... again, you think you'd come up with Lindy England. I pulled out of my ass. He beats you with John Larroquette. Oh. You can't. You can't <laughs> fucking... Take a sip. <laughs> Good goodness. <laughs> Yeah. What are you yeah. in town for, Doug? We should get the plug uh, out there. Oh, BB King. BB King's oh, nice. tonight. Fuck yeah, man. Cool. And then the Washington uh, State Theater, D.C. Oh, yeah, yeah. May 9th. That's Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And Trocadero in Philly. Oh, no. You guys are still big in Friday. Philly. Wow. What's Trocadero? It's a oh, it's place Bob? I'm playing. Yeah. yeah. It's a theater. Yeah. Play. Theater e. You're doing weeknights too. That's tougher. Like a Monday night. And do you want to do weeknights? Yeah. If, 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 <laughs> before I quit completely, I just eliminate Friday, Saturday out of my life. And yeah. Just, like, all really? those fucking Joe Lunch Bucket assholes. <laughs> oh, I did my Friday. Oh. <laughs> they just like they force the entertainment into their own head yes. because that's what society dictates, and they find the good thing in the weekly to go to, and they don't. They have, have to be doing something yes. on a Friday and because Saturday night that's to why, justify their existence because to they work all Monday week, Friday, right? Right. They have to. So they they uh, do that, and then they get hammered, drunk, and fuck up everyone else's weekend that's and around not them. Good at it. Like, yeah. I, I, again, I'm a drunk, but I consider myself seasoned. Right. And, like, drunkest people will say almost to a fault where they'll go i didn't even know you were hammered right yeah i was blackout drunk well wow. you seem normal which is almost a a problem in that yes people, you can't say uh, well it was okay you were drunk because if you did I get something that too. really people bad don't, don't even know or you said something completely out of line and you go i'm sorry i was blackout drunk no you weren't you, right. you were you were completely lucid. I've well, carried on a few conversations way. with some law enforcement officers out my driver's side window <laughs> when I've probably been a little over the limit. But uh, no slurring, no weird eye movements. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's 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 a talent. Yeah. Uh, like I said, it could drunk? be a problem. You have, have you done the ambient drunk yet? No. Everyone has stories. No. no. Oh, when they just fucking forget that they, they woke up, I have had did things. And not even not really know. drunk. Yes. Where I've been uh, with my manager was staying at my house, and I took an ambient, oh. had a few cocktails. I'm going to oh bed. It's God. kicking in. They tell you not to do And then came that. back out and had just completely lucid, rational business conversations where... Oh. In the morning, he brought it back up, and I go, what are you talking about? He goes, the thing you told me last night. He's a Scotsman. I can't do it. Well. <laughs> I but, thought he was Indian. I, <laughs> the thing. Yeah. The thing. Oh, the thing you <laughs> told no, me. No, no, no. We talked about this, and I, I go, I have no. Well, you came back out. I go, 
I came back out. I like wow. Whoa, but that's he, fucked like, up. He fucked knows up me right. as a drunk, so he was even. Confused. That's odd that that part of your mind can be functioning, and then the part that just remembers all of it is just asleep. It's gone. Yeah. So you're just out there having a normal conversation, but uh, yeah. not recorded. Like, your DVR I've wasn't recording. Heard so many stories, like even normal. You know, Steve Barmel, Judy Brown's oh, sure, sure, husband. Sure. He almost had a plane grounded because he had just a couple of whiskeys and an ambient on a plane and just started creating a ruckus again no no memory no recollection right? wow and you take a lot stories. of except ambient i've heard I horror stopped. stories no, about no, yeah. I stopped. Yeah. why did you stop well i realized uh, like uh, getting prescriptions is a pain in the ass uh xanax i only take it to sleep and i realized they still sell fucking otcs over the counter Nighttime sleep sleep aid, night hall. It works just as Does well. Does it really? Like I'm going over to Mexico and getting my balls busted by border patrol, uh, or, or customs. trying to bring back fucking like yeah, like Indian. why? Yeah. yeah, fucking nighttime sleep aid works just huh. as well. Hmm. I use Damn. valerian root. That's like totally like organic. Just it actually but works, it works okay. No. It, yeah, I'm sure not as well as Ambien. Melatonin and all that. Melatonin works for me for like a day or two. Like I took melatonin Saturday night and Sunday. I was fucking out of it all day. I was just tired. I didn't feel high. I just felt like sleepy. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I try, I try to stuff. like change him up. Like I'd take Benadryl occasionally. I don't want I don't want to get a tolerance for anything. Right, for any right? one thing. So I would do like an Ambien and then a Benadryl mm. and then I had a night out a few times where I like take a Xanax. And then you're drinking, and uh, the next morning was pretty much like, all right, so I went out. And then, yeah. <laughs> but that's always the problem yeah, is you yeah, don't yeah. do it to go out. No, I don't understand no, no, no. people. I knew people that would take, like, six bars of Xanax. Jesus days. Christ. Like, I would be, I've never taken more than a bar. What's a bar? A bar that's, is even uh, a lot. Two milligrams, two milligrams, which I, like, if I was flying when I lived in L.A., L.A. to Heathrow, Nonstop is about fourteen hours. And I'd take a bar for that to be out for the whole. Trip. It helps you sleep for that. Oh, it oh would, you're uh, done. Nauseous. A bar for me. For first, that, you get again, a nice kind of like a maximum. First, you get a nice like ah, <sighs> feeling, like, oh, and then boom, you're just oh. gone, out. And I'm at a place in my life where sleep is the best fucking thing sleep in the is world. king, man. Sleep yeah. is the fucking shit. You, I'm a terrible sleeper. Are you a good sleeper? No, that's why okay, I take yeah. the shit. Can you stay asleep or you can't? Like, I woke up this morning at 4.30, and I just couldn't go back to sleep. I can't fall asleep, and then I can't stay asleep. It's fucking Instant. Uh, it, I'm like a cat. <laughs> fucking curl up. I don't up. sleep long. Even if, even if I knock out, I, I rarely sleep more than six hours. Right. Six hours is a long time. I would love six hours. I don't even get six. I normally go to sleep probably 1 a.m., the earliest, really, 1 a.m., and I'm up by fucking, you know, quarter to five. That's a nap, though. Yeah, but then I'll That's come home. Well, yeah, I'll, I'll come home from here and then one and I woke sleep. Up panicked at six, going, oh fuck, I have to be up. At yeah, eight. Mm -hmm. where'd you walk from? How far do you have to walk? Three blocks. Oh, okay. I do though. It's like. During, but that's like my that's why sleep. I hate sleep. New York so much. Is I always stay in Times Square, and I uh, assume that the entire city is that. That's it. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, 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 mm. I guess part of my head knows it doesn't suck as bad as I think it's. Times Square yeah. sucks. And I think it sucks. It's horrible. But, you know, yeah, just walking out to smoke a cigarette, and you're like, I can't even stand outside without being no. like, caught in a wash, like just there's a tourists flood of and humanity. fucking. Yeah, Times yeah, Square. Yeah. Where, where, like, like where. I, I fucking well, I'm always playing here, somewhere fucking near here, or I'm doing a show. So I any of the hotels here. on Broadway and shit, you just walk out and you're like, Ugh. Ugh. I wouldn't trust any of them. Why? Just bed bugs. Bed bugs before. Fuck yeah. that. The Renaissance is nice. Oh, I'm sure that's nice. The hotel I'm at. That <laughs> that's what stayed. sucks. Every time you get put in a shitty hotel, you can't complain about it on stage or on the air because then everyone knows where you're staying. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. fuck with you. But yeah, uh, you stay under had, a different name. How do you oh. do that? Jim Just go Norton. down and go. Don't don't yeah, use the, don't use Doug Stanhope. I guess, yeah, I guess you could ask. Yeah. I always do that. Now, now they're just going to call hotels. <laughs> then I, 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 this, for the same reason I have sunglasses on my head, yeah. but I'm not wearing them to cover up my bloodshot, obvious drunk eyes, <laughs> is the same reason I wouldn't go to the front desk and go, listen, don't use my right. real name. 
<laughs> yeah, that just sounds like, suspicious. Who are you? That's who one of those see something, say something yeah. moments, I think. Like, it's like, oh, his real name? He doesn't want to fucking. Can we go back to the cops? Yeah, can I leave my backpack? You yeah. have yeah. a garage. You should use D.B. Cooper. Just yeah. to... <laughs> they go with the leisure suit. Those are some I, nice fucking. I want to go back to the leisure. How many leisure, uh, leisure suits do you I, own? I, 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 I... I went through a period of football jerseys. Right. Oh, I, remember that. I don't I have that. a lot of money, but every penny's disposable because I don't have kids. <laughs> yes. And I, my house is paid for, and I don't live like you. I don't live in a place that takes a lot of money to live. Uh, so I went through a period of football jerseys where I bought every team's football jersey and then mm -hmm. a few throwbacks if I don't... Yeah, okay. So I have like 70 football Holy jerseys shit. I bought on eBay that are now in storage because I went to... So I have like, uh, I don't know, like 45 jackets. Really? And, How much do the leisure suit cost when you buy them? Well, you, you try to get them in thrift stores right. or I get them on eBay. Yeah, you, you just can't just go into a shit. fucking store and... You find something. That's the problem. You go, oh, I got this coat for $4. Yeah. Well, uh, then I went on eBay to accessorize and find pants that match. And, <laughs> yes. Damn. Shit. Do you ever have this them all fitted? In. Do they fit? Uh, well, the ones that you get that don't fit, you either have... Well, I, I've never had a coat taken in, but I've had pants taken in or taken yeah. in. Yeah. Yeah. My arms are short. I always have to, and my legs, I always have to have picking pants. It's humiliating. Do you? I'm trying to buy man's clothes. Stand up fucking... here, Mr. Norton. Yeah. Hey. So how much, do, you lost enough weight. How much did, did it change your, uh, like, like I'm terrified because I'm trying to quit smoking, but I know I'm going to get fat, and I just spent all this dumb money on fucking on dumb fucking clothes. clothes. <laughs> it's worth it, though. To, They're not going to fit. So, so your pants fit the same? No, I've, I've got, I, I think I have a photo of the clothes that are going to Goodwill, because I can't fucking, let me see. I, I have, I literally lost 80% of my wardrobe. He lost oh, wow. 30 pounds, Doug. I should have the Almost kids 30, on. Yeah. If, I'm, if you can hear me fucking sipping on the air, oh. like, <laughs> oh, nothing please. makes me crazy. That's why I can't listen to NPR. It, they, they always close talk the microphone and they go... Oh, and I, uh, fucking uh, yeah. mouth sounds <laughs> physically yes, violent. I'm where, with you. When I hear uh, people eat, it drives me insane. <laughs> nothing worse. When it's moist it's, eating. No yeah, good anymore. Yeah. All those clothes are getting fucking... Wow. It's a fucking huge pile. Let's, what, what, let me see the pile. It's all pants that, and shirts. Pile. like four oh, piles of clothes. Jimmy. It's probably about 75 different items that I can't And you can't take any of those pants in? What percentage of your... 75 or 80 percent of my pants. Maybe, gone. maybe even gone. More. Yeah, gone. What yeah. size were they? I don't even know because they're different. Like it was, I liked Abercrombie because it was a 32. I could actually fit, but probably a 34 down to a 30 or something. I just can't wear them anymore. 32 is that's the inches. Mm, like, yeah. There shouldn't be a 32 that doesn't fit. I just <laughs> sorry. Let's not go off on fashion. <laughs> <laughs> I, couldn't, I know that they, they, they oh, were right right I'm taking thighs. the fucking cans off. You don't want to hear. I hate my voice even more in reality. <laughs> they were. Dr. Drew's giving up uh, celebrity rehab. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you were very yeah. vocal with the Dr. Drew. I know. Uh, and I, I, I could fucking go on and on. It's uh, That fucking bit is great. It's it's, it's just so truthful. I, we played oh, it on my show. God. Yeah. He, someone told me that, and I went... It's fucking great. No, we yeah. loved it. That was, that, we've been was, keeping tabs of his fucking Kevorkian-like... Uh, foray into reality television what's norton's take on this i actually like dr drew yeah i do yeah Boy. well he's a fucking aa kid oh, yeah i'm, I'm recovering yeah. and i don't he's an AA recovering. Kid. you know you're fucking recovered motherfucker no i'm not I'm, Stop honestly, it. No. I'm telling you no i know enough people who've gone out after 15 years and they pick up like they never left off not one person's ever come back and said things were better so personally no, but, but you you don't drink is recovered it's, you're not always yeah we're all one bullet away from suicide, but that doesn't mean we're suicidal. But whatever it is that makes <laughs> I'm, me... I'm recovering from... Go ahead. It, it, recovery to me is an active thing. I mean, for other people, maybe it's not, but for me it is. <clears> it's, <throat> uh, I know that if I pick up where I'll be, I have no doubt. It's not, it's not, it's not that they brainwash me. I know but exactly... But until you do I'm that, you're recovered, right? Um, I think just, that's what... It, it, being in recovery, yeah. I should say. Yeah, I guess technically Doug is right. You are recovered. But it's like it's it's still an active. But they, thing. That, that the whole program of Alcoholics Anonymous keeps you subservient to. Oh, I'm not I'm I'm not in control of my own life. I need to do this all the time. It's it's this like uh, milking you into religion. It's where it's you know God is the basis of it. And if you don't have God, there's no way to believe in AA without God. That's completely untrue.
Mm -hmm. The chapter to the agnostic in the big book tells you how to work AA without God, and the chapter is... Well, this is how you believe in God. <laughs> I, I can't speak about AA. I'll just say this. I, I would say any group that talks about God, I know enough people who are atheist or agnostic or just completely, like my own struggles with fucking higher power. Uh, God can be group of drunks. Any power that is fucking doing something, I can't do. Whatever that is. A power greater than you. Yeah, and there is one. And the bottom line is my best thinking got me to where I was. And whenever I have a problem, it's my fucking best thinking. And the bottom line is the results... Or I was one way and now I'm this way. So whatever it is, I can intellectualize but, but, it. But, but your best thinking has you sober for 20, 30 years? No, it's because 26. It's because I did what other people suggested. And it's like Not I drink. No, nah, it was more than that. It's about helping other people. It's about changing the way I am. So because you cannot drink and be a dry drunk. You cannot drink and just this be is a just miserable the dry that drunk. They teach you. <laughs> I grew up with this. I was the same way, and I believed this shit because my mother was AA. I was a kid doing homework in the back of AA meetings, and I just took all this. <laughs> AA will tell you in the fucking that if if uh uh uh. Fucking completely fucking stop my brain just stopped <laughs> right there for a second. What this, is a dry drunk, by the way? A dry drunk is somebody who stops drinking and does nothing to change who they are oh. or what makes them that person. Uh oh. And I don't so, believe you can change who you are. Well, of course you can. I mean, uh, I mean, maybe some people can, some people can. I can. I can only speak for myself. Um, and you be a, a dry drunk is somebody who's always white knuckling it. And doesn't change any of the things that make them who they are in a, in a negative way. So they're just not putting the substance in their body. So they're not drinking, but they're miserable. And there's plenty of times I'm a dry drunk where they're fucking, they're not facing, like they're not looking at life on life's terms. They're bitching, <clears throat> complaining, unhappy all the time. The same shit that caused them to drink is there, and they're changing none of their fucking right, personality. But AA teaches you that you cannot change yourself without AA. I can quote AA like scripture. A lot of I stood at a crossroads. The, I would say this, they, and again, I'm not going to say anything about AA, AA will itself. say that the only people, if you without AA, you will, you'll end up dead or in prison or institutionalized. Without, 12, it's in the fucking big 12 book. 12-step people talk about their own experience, mm -hmm. and they never say, this is the only way to do it. I know that. They say, uh, there's one suggestion where they say, try what we've suggested for 90 days. And then go out and try some controlled drinking. It's it's it, it is attraction. It's like if, if this doesn't work for you, fine. They never come out on outside issues. Um, it's not a cult because they don't. It's like if you want to stay, you stay. Most people don't. Most people go out and, and drink again. Mm. It's but, just for people who want to be there. tells you you. Ha AA is the only way that works. That I've is, never, ever, in I'll, all my years I'll, of being sober, I'll, I'll heard bring that. Bring me the big book of AA. I'll find it. <laughs> I've never, been, I've never been. stood at a crossroads thing that we know people who have tried and failed. I, I you know, almost from being a child, which I don't even remember my childhood. I can remember a lot of the fucking nonsense that. But there are people who are just sharing what's worked for them. Like nobody ever said this is. The only way, and without this, you're a dead... Because I've heard it raised, you know, people have talked about it that I know who are sober. It's never been said. That this is what worked for us. That's mm -hmm. what people say. There was no way. We never knew any way we could stop. And here we are, stopped and staying stopped and living productive lives. This is what we did. If you want it, this is what you should do. If you don't, do it your way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Knock you yourself know out. people who... Because I know several... That were just miserable, rotten drunks that True. just fall down embarrassments, that yes. just stop drinking, and they're fine. There are I people, know a million of them. Absolutely. I don't know a million of them. I mean, I know... I'm now that we're aged, I know a lot more. <laughs> I you know. Just, sure. Hey, you used to be fun. Well, yeah, I was kind of an asshole, too. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, they're just yeah. fine. They had kids. They go, yeah, sure. I can't do that shit hey, anymore. Hey, maybe there are people that can do that. Good for them. I mean, but nobody would disparage that or say, they can't do it. They're, they're not, But they don't say, I'm in recovery. Here's what they, they say. Just, they just stopped. That, that's and them. They were, and they're fine. But I, I know that the things that like in my life that have changed or that I need to change, mm. I know exactly where it comes from. Everything I've learned about myself that's real, like how full of shit I was. And again, they talk about how easy it is to intellectualize. Smart people have a much harder time getting sober because it's so easy to that's, intellectualize. That's big book stuff, too. Though. Of course it is. There, 12 there step are stuff. people who are too smart for AA. That's in the big book. It's not saying that. It's saying that. No, that's uh, actually, I, I believe that's a quote. People who are <laughs> intelligent, really intelligent, 
can very easily justify anything they do, can very easily explain everything away. I mean, it just cuts off every single angle of bullshit that I had. And again, it was written in the 30s and in the early 40s. So yeah, there's stuff about God. Trailer for sale or rent. Let me pen a little book, <laughs> a little tome. <laughs> but it's if it works for people and they don't tell other people they have to believe it, which they don't, and they have no opinion on outside issues, and they want people to protect their own anonymity. First publicly. of all, we're, we're getting a little broad with they, because that's like people who say, oh, a true Muslim. <laughs> all right, there's a lot of they in AA. Yes. And whoever's running the meeting really decides, well, I this meeting is about this. I can only this speak about AA as a certain... Whatever. I, I don't say Your if I'm group. in it or not. Yeah. I, I don't ever break personal anonymity or say I've ever been to it because maybe I have, maybe I haven't. It doesn't matter. I respect that. Do you go that. to meetings on the road? Um, I do a lot less than I should. Let's say that. I do When I'm doing the right stuff, I'm happier and I feel better. When I'm not... I don't feel as good. That's just the reality. It's what I've noticed in 26 years. I'm not saying you're wrong for right. doing anything. It's like people who go, hey, religion made my brother's a guy. You know how I feel about fucking child breeding. Fuck you. Don't have more people. Oh, but yeah, my br brother had a kid and he was the guy that we all thought might snap at one point in his life that would shoot up an office place. <laughs> he had that kind of rage. Paxton, Massachusetts, you're getting a fucking terrorist. And I'm, I'm putting my brother's name under because you, you're a fucking bunch of cunts. <laughs> and I'm giving up my... <laughs> Has this made the fucking Reuters Not yet. fucking Not yet. news feed yet? I don't think they. I'm putting that guy in my dad's fucking grave. In I, I don't think they believe you. Massachusetts. And we're, we're trying to get the funeral home like, on the line. Look guys like Mitch Hedberg, man. Brilliant comic. Oh god. Yeah. Smart, creative, interesting guy, and it's like look at what a fucking waste that is. And it's like the other. Let's say the other option was getting sober in this like, like th it's never the better option to go the way he went ever you're doing the classic mistake of confusing everyone as being like you no I'm not I'm you're a crazy. fucking brilliant sober guy but again you were drunk till you were 19 you didn't even flesh it out right 18 <laughs> flesh it out but i know what it was going is, it was, it was I, an I, impossibility a that sober i sober headberg and aa headberg is the most depressing thought i could imagine more. I don't think he would be him. The, like I think that's the illusion that we tell ourselves that that is now a part of who I am. It's like no, smoking. that's again. You're 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 making everyone the same as you. There are people. I go. All right, you're you're a fuck up. Sean Rouse is brilliant. He would be brilliant sober. He's not sober. He should be sober. Right. He's a guy you don't go. Come on, you can have one. He's a fuck up. And but he, but I, alcoholics and but, addicts are like me. We you know what? We all think we're that unique. We all have that. Cr we're not. In certain ways, but you know what we I, are. I think Hedberg same. was. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, he went too far. I think but, it's easier to swallow his death because to, we, if we look at him that way, it's easier to handle but I, it. I knew him. <laughs> like, yeah, I, mean, I knew him too, not as well as you, but I also know that it's 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 never better to be dead of heroin than it is to be alive and trying to create sober. I've never, no matter how creative huh. you are under the influence. You are never a better artist dead than you would have been alive. And it's, 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 it's sad that uh, that you waste go over, happened. I can make some lists sure. at the break of people that, yeah, if they had died at Hedberg's age, well, they'd be recognized now. Instead, <laughs> you're like, ooh, he's still around trying to do this? <laughs> That's he had his moment. We, we like to look at it that way because it's, 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 it's less painful to realize hmm. that this was a waste this brilliant guy. Yeah, a lot is, more to offer is what he you're saying. So much but more. But would he have been able to offer that sober? Because that's course. well, that's Doug's point. That's all yes. I'm saying. Yes, because again, we, we're not. When you're a kid, so growing nobody up, you know that's got sober and became unfunny. Oh, dude, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen the other way too. How many fucking great minds? fucking get get shit canned by this and, and start to suck and their careers going nowhere so it kind of works I, both I, ways I, 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 I completely agree with you there but it's not just one way but when mitch was a kid growing up or any comics a kid growing up you're not drunk and on heroin the whole time what makes mm -hmm. you who you are your personality that that thing about being funny maybe you lose inhibitions when you're high and maybe you lose a lot of this but mitch still would have well, been no, funny no, fucking with hallucinogens really I, I give so much credit to that, <laughs> and yeah. I would I like I, the smoking is a problem that I wish I'd never done. That's maybe the one regret I wish I never started smoking. Yeah, there's no payoff to it, but I would encourage 
kids, teenagers, under controlled circumstances, fuck with hallucinogens. It really, <laughs> like, that made my head, like, so wide open, coming from, a, like, a Worcester place. Right. And that small shithead mentality where it really opened me up so much. And, uh, like, ecstasy back when you could count on the, the purity of it. Like, it uh, taught me so much love and s s introspection. Yeah, alcohol is a pointless thing, but I enjoy it. It works for me. <laughs> I can make it work. Yeah, like yeah, a yeah. diet. Uh, and cigarettes are point. But, yeah, fucking hallucinogens. Like, Hedberg really stretched his brain out. And, yeah, heroin fucked him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I haven't well. tried it yet. But I'll wait till everything's <laughs> falling apart and give it a shot. Give it a shot. When it's yeah, when it's the fucking final stretch and I'm in last place. When everything yeah. that it could fuck up is already fucked up. Yeah. 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 So what do you got to lose? Yeah. A live Mitch performing and, and creating fucking is, brilliant. Is better than a dead Mitch. It's the bottom. I mean, it sounds simple and stupid, but that's what it comes down to. All the intellectualizing, all the brilliance means zero. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch is smart enough to say what you're saying. He was a smart enough guy to figure that out. And all of the, the knowledge about that. Mitch was it, like one of the few guys early in my when I was even stupid that I go, this guy is light years ahead of me. Spiritually, mm -hmm. intellectually, he laughed at all of us. I'm like, this guy knows that we're a goof. And, you know, then why couldn't all of that fucking smarts and all of that genius stop what happened? Because he didn't really want to hang around with us. Do you, but do you know what I'm saying? Like that's <laughs> maybe we weren't that important to Mitch that <laughs> life was that. You're you're you putting a that's... value on living that sure. other people might not share. I don't buy that. I don't. Mm. I believe that we. Nobody just, I mean, people commit suicide all the time. Yeah. But I think that people put a certain value on it. I mean, come on. It's, it's, in the do. moment, yeah, if someone has a gun to your head. Yeah. But, in the, <laughs> like, uh, do I, I really, again, people who don't want children, like, hey, it, what, what's the point? But what's like, the, do you think that on, can I jump in for a second? What's the value, though? Living a really long life it's or just, a short one that is packed with some, right. some yeah, amazing shit? Amazing shit, yeah, but being fucking stoned and missing gigs and falling apart at the end, which is what was happening to him. No, I'm, it's I'm, sad to me that that happened, and I guarantee he didn't overdose on purpose. There are people that commit suicide, but I don't believe he overdosed on purpose. And as smart as he is, and he um, was, and he was, he could not mm -hmm. control uh, that. The, the word on the street, uh, the inside fucking Perez Hilton, uh, for the record out there, drug users, was it wasn't actually the heroin that killed him. It was the downers coming off of okay, it. Whatever. Prescription uh, shit. So, yeah, remember that prescription drugs are really the most dangerous, which sucks for me because, again, I enjoy a Xanax when I can get one. Right, and right. And all these fucking celebrities dying of them is going to make them illegal. Do you think you're addicted? No, no. Actually, I've stopped taking Xanax I for I mean, to months. booze or to any of it. I, uh, alcohol I'm worried about because I watch a lot of intervention for fun. On an off night, I'll open a bottle of red wine and go, I'm not drinking tonight. I'm just drinking wine, and we're going to watch Interfection. <laughs> right, right. But you can. Like, the, the <laughs> amount that I drink over the course of time that I've drank, the, even when I stop drinking for a few days when I'm quitting smoking, like I, I quit smoking for three weeks, most of three weeks, and I'll still drink a few drinks a night because you do have the chance that you can have seizures if you quit immediately but if you want to stop if it's so easy to intellectualize it i'm not saying forever but why not give yourself a break just to fucking <sighs> fucking you know give your body a chance to but that's what up i a did but uh, yeah, for the first few days i will have a couple of drinks just because right. i don't want to take a chance of i don't know you, you don't know what the, the problem with the whole war on drugs thing is they put so much bullshit into it. You can't g glean any reasonable medical advice when they have the fucking, this, oh, pot leads to this. And you go, no, I know everyone that smoked pot for a 100 fucking years. I know you're lying. So, okay, where's the truth come in mm -hmm. with your PSAs? There's so much bullshit against drugs that, all right, I watch people. Okay, this guy died on intervention <laughs> because he went into a seizure because he tried to quit cold turkey 
All right, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. have a couple of drinks just to make sure. But I'm still fine not drinking in circumstances. Uh, yeah. So why I can go make back my to own it, rehab. Though? Why go back I like to drinking. It. Okay. Well, drinking is, is. I know. I definitely uh, get that, and that's fine. Yeah. Somebody enjoys. I love that whole culture. I love the glasses. I buy fucking glasses online. I like rocks glasses. I like bars. Exactly. Setting. The ritual of it is fucking. Is what's right. happening right. because of it worth it? If it is, then cool. Like, and yeah. I, I'm not asking that with a def, definitive answer. Either. Is because you know what's happening physically when you do it. Like, you understand what's happening <clears> to the body, to the liver, and how the older we get, the harder it gets to stop, and the fucking more damage it does for real. Is the trade-off worth it? If it is, then you just enjoy it. But if it's not, if deep down you're like, I probably shouldn't be the doing this. The only way you could tell that for sure is to live 46 years sober to see if it's better. <laughs> <laughs> what's the trade-off? I don't know. But like, I mean, you know, if you're feeling well, like you, you know. If if I'm not feeling well, I know I'm not feeling well. If my body is not good, I know my body is not good. So I mean, are you feel? If you feel fine, then you feel fine. If you feel like eh, this is taking a toll, then well, that's anything. Oh, Do, I, I no, ate too much gravy. I fucking love gravy. <laughs> Why would you eat a potato? But nobody eats gravy. Nobody blacks out eating gravy. <laughs> nobody. Very few people. Uh, you know but, what I mean? Beat their family when they're eating right, gravy. Yeah, okay. it's, it's, well, the penalty's do, not the same. I don't do that. What about the hangovers? Don't do that drunk I, yeah. either. What about I the feel, hangovers, mm. Doug? Are they just brutal? Just, you just deal with it? But morning feels the same regardless. I've realized 60% minimum of a hangover is cigarettes. Because when I drink, I fucking chain smoke, and I'm just outside looking at my friends through a window. And... When I stop smoking, I feel so much better no matter how drunk I was. Really? So I realize how much of the hangover is cigarettes. I just fucking, I, I, did, I decided like like probably three weeks ago just to fucking stop drinking. I just stopped. Not because I'm like, uh, I'm never going to drink again or might not. I don't know. I'm not, I, I didn't put any goal on this thing. But it was more like, all right, I, since I started drinking in, as, as a kid, I've never stopped. <laughs> I never took a breather. Never yeah. swan and and I wanted to see if it would be like, oh, well, I stopped, but all right, this is cool. Or if I'd be, I didn't drink like ah, crazy because I I didn't know what the result well, you, would be. You don't do this drunk. I've I've been drunk my entire I've, career. I've done this so very I, drunk. Like <laughs> when I when I'm sober. I'm, I, I go into managerial mode where I'm so worried about, all right, did you get the guest list and are these people coming in on time and is everyone seated? Like my head would, I would be on stage going, these people need a drink. Like I, my head is completely trying to uh, take over the room and control right. everything. And when I, I have cocktails, then I can get into my act. Mm. And I really, I've tried to do comedy sober and I suck. I fucking wow. suck. But I'm really sure, maybe you do it for a little while because your your your, I, your uh, mind is different. I but might that, overcome it. Yeah, oh, sure. of course you would. I mean, you're you're a funny dude, and your mind works really interesting. There's nothing to do with the drinking. Drinking just lowers <laughs> the inhibitions, and you could say things or not give a fuck. Or, but that doesn't make anybody smarter. It doesn't make anybody no, it doesn't more make interesting. Smarter, and I need my inhibitions to be because otherwise I'm overwhelmed with control freak. The the whole environment. That girl's on her cell phone. She's texting. Uh -huh. Is that person filming? Like I have. Like there's nothing in wow. my head that I whatever it is that that is you'd find a way to make that part of your brain work really well for you too so it or, wouldn't matter it wouldn't affect you or I, I could have, have some cocktails <laughs> I can afford it now <laughs> Again, or I'm I not could saying just don't drink I'm just, you know, should I'm we just change you, the subject no, there's people out there that don't drink that are so bored that's no, why I like that nah, I like Dr. Drew I'll tell you why there's two the schools of thought but I'm not trying to tell anybody that their school of thought is wrong do what you gotta do two very different ways of looking at this in the room right now you fucking sycophant here's why I like Dr. Drew Here's why I like him. <laughs> oh, that's right. This started with Dr. Yeah, Drew. because you asked why I like him. Here's why I like him. I think that the odds of most people staying sober are very low. It's the reality. And I really do think that the way to get people to pay attention to something is through celebrities. And this shit happens anyway. That's, that's, but that's what our TV culture is. He's like, if you want people to look at something, you put celebrities in. So what's But the, if you're using a bad template of what will work for you, AA is a fucking, there's statistics out there where AA is the same or less than just cold turkey, I'm going to do it myself. You may be right. I don't, I've never read that, but maybe you're right. No, uh, <laughs> but again, maybe, it is, maybe that's correct. I don't say that AA is the only thing that would work for people. If you can quit cold turkey and just be, go ahead. There's no, there's no 
like, this is the way to do it. This is the product we're selling. If it works for you, cool. If cold turkey works for somebody, cool. But I don't think Dr. Drew is committing this cultural crime by just showing people going through this process. They're that choosing. God is going to fix you. That's, again, the only way you can work AA is through believing in God. That's, that's why they say it doesn't work for smart that's people. That's completely Incorrect. Fucking eight out of the 12 steps are God-related. I had to give up my life and turn my will and my power over to a higher... Uh, my, uh, a power greater pull, than yourself. Yeah, pull, pull them up. But they also <laughs> say that there are plenty of, there, there are plenty the of people steps. who are sober, uh -huh. who do not believe in a deity of any kind, who have great, productive, sober lives, as good as anybody else. There's no difference in the way they do it. Then as you're time, not working the steps, because the steps tell you you have to believe in a God. They, of course they don't tell you that. Of course they don't I'm tell you I'm going to read them to you. You can, but they don't <laughs> tell you. There are no, you have to do anything. Nobody we admitted you, we were powerless over our, our, our addiction, that our lives had become unmanageable. Do you agree with that for yourself? No, I'm not powerless. That's the that's what's fucked up about you giving credit to this when you're a smart person that overcame this yourself because you're smart had nothing to do with it. Mitch was a smart guy too, but he decided to go a different direction. It's the same <laughs> yeah, as the old. Direction. It's the same okay. as the hackney so Mitch, joke of fucking Mitch, the, the sports player who gives the credit to God when they win. I thank God, but they don't give themselves any credit. I, I get that point, but that's, I don't think that's the same we thing. We came to believe talking. that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Yeah, we, that's what you have to believe, is a power greater no, than... No, hold on. Hold, on. Made it, well, a decision. hold on, one thing at a time. It doesn't right. say you have to believe. It doesn't we say... We came to believe. It's an experiential thing. We came to believe. So if you're an atheist and you did not have some conversion of spirituality where you came to believe in a power greater than yourself, what if you believe rightly that you're the greatest power in your own life that you have the, the the you can manifest your own destiny well then good for you knock yourself out made a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of god as we understand god what if you understand that god is the silliest belief a fucking human being can have the word what you, you but right now i believe in batman as well you have not shown me one thing where it says you have to believe anything this is, these are Hold, the 12 steps no, no, no. of AA. We, we made a decision to turn over to the care of god as we understood if you want aa the, to work you have to believe that that's simply the as we understood is, that, is the important part. A lot of people, for them, the, their higher power. I'm telling you, I, I mean, I live this too. Their, their higher, higher power, power is not is a deity. No, they believe in either the power of the group or something. All right, now I'm going to have to quote my own bit that I just remembered. <laughs> is okay. <laughs> I believe that I am my only higher power. That therefore I'm turning my will over, over to yourself. To myself, you know and what, I want to cock in, in all honesty, if that mm. works for you. And it helps you not drink. Nobody would I'm say. I'm not arguing that. You I'm can't arguing do that. that this program tells you that the belief in God is the only way to work this program. But they don't talk I'm not about, talking about what works for me. I'm talking about. They're not this. talking about God as a, a God in heaven or a God of Allah. They're not talking about but, that because obviously there's a lot of people that would never get sober if that was forced down their throat. Never. They wouldn't I, do I, it. I, the belief in a god is silly. It doesn't. I'm not even talking about one that has backstory. You're saying you don't think that. that, that, that you're saying. <laughs> I'm talking about god. any god that there's anything that is could be a god. The idea of god. You're saying you don't like the idea. Is silly. That a power that you need to find some kind of a thing greater than yourself. Even well, if it's the group. Yeah. What if it's the group? Some people say they use the group. And I really know people that have done that. God, group of drunks. That's all I can do. I don't believe in fucking God. I don't believe in any type of religion. You're going to turn your will over to a group. Meaning... So you're, you're like, okay, hey, what should I do about my finances? In a weird bunch way... bunch of guys smoking <laughs> divot faces in AA fucking halls in a bunch bingo hall. I'm going to turn my smoking. power and my will over to you. In, in, in a, a weird, weird way, it, but it does work for people. That's what works for people who don't believe in a deity. Hypnosis worked for Lewis Black quitting smoking for a couple of years. Yeah, really? for a couple of years, <laughs> but it works for it a lot of people a lot. There's no way to explain to somebody who's actively drinking. Let's get back to Dr. Drew, because now we're just infighting. But I'm not uh, even fighting with you. I, like, I, but I want to trash Dr. Drew. I'm not... I think you know, it's 
I'm very just debating you discussion. when I want to trash Dr. Drew yes. as a person. You, I love. All right. But I, I yeah, but, Dr. But Drew. But that you can't say that you have to believe in, in God because it, it's, it tells it, right. But it does not say you have to do anything. It does not say Admit once. to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact nature of our wrongs. This is where Scientology one-upped uh, fucking Catholicism, Christianity. Christianity would get you, they, they have confession for a reason. Because once you've told someone, you feel indebted to them. Like, oh shit, they know what I fucked up and I fucked that guy's wife and I said it. So now it's the, it's a cult process. Scientology went one better, and they, that's why they have that whole system of uh, video. So it's, yeah, it's yeah. either that. Yeah. Wait, 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 okay. wait. This is important. This is, you know, Scientology gets you to say it on tape. Yeah, yeah. So that's why you have Travolta's right. and fucking Tom Cruise's that well, Travolta wanted to leave, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got that the auditing we did. Right. We have it on tape. All right, look, that's how you got I, to the I, next level. I like sucking the you, occasional cock. <laughs> I was in a sauna. Yeah. I was in a sauna right. once. So it's either. <laughs> Doesn't seem smart. This yeah. is just about getting to rid of your fucking shame. This is just about getting all those. We're, they say we're as sick as our secrets, and it's like the stuff that you hold in that is secretive is what you feel bad about. This is just about telling another human being that trusting another person and getting it mm. off your chest. You're it's not that unique. Indoctrination into fucking Christianity. I but swear it's, it's to God, it's absolutely not an indoctrination to anything. You tell I somebody. It can tell. be. It can be your doctor. They don't care who it is. It can be a stranger. Nobody says it must be a member of this organization. It can be. Well, no, that's isn't what what, what, no, what step is you. that where you have to go back to all the people and fucking apologize? For oh yeah, it says made direct make amends to such nine, people. Yeah. Made make a list amends. of all people. Yeah, I know that's a terrible thing. Made a list of all people we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. That means for all of the bullshit I have pulled and the damage I have done, I'm fucking owning up to it and I'm saying I'm sorry. Everyone. Except in those cases, hold on, except in those cases where to do so would injure them or others. So it's not go back and tell, hey, Bill, I fucked your wife. Because uh -huh. that would injure Bill's wife or he, possibly you. You uh -huh. use common sense with it. But it's about fucking just cleaning up your garbage and your wreckage. I think I, I understand what Doug's saying in that uh, the way God is worded in yes. here, it seems to be a, a little more of a leap on your part that you're interpreting it to be, mean well, anything. Well, it's, oh, it's come that way over the years because, again, I, it, of course it was based a lot of it on Catholicism and Catholic teaching. It was written in the fucking 30s and the 40s. That's yeah. where that's where they call the that the good old for days. Sale. Sorry, like, <laughs> every time King of the road. <laughs> every time I think about Bill W. Or <laughs> but that's where the uh, I, I, yeah. But Bill tried hallucinogenics. Bill W. was a womanizer. I, know, no, I, I just picture him as uh, Ryan O'Neill in Paper Moon. <laughs> I, think of Bill w. I love that movie. Just door to door <laughs> Bible prick. salesman in the Dust Bowl in fucking Oklahoma, and checking into During a halfway the depression. house. And, <laughs> Yeah, I mean... Uh, Sorry, that was off topic. Oh, that's uh, fine. I, I never saw it. No, I didn't remember what I was saying. Good one. I've, uh, we got to head toward think, a break Yeah, the, the interpretation of God. Yeah, I understand that, dude. And I was fucking 18 when I got sober. Uh -huh. You think that uh, I fucking... I was believing in God? I don't... No. I still have a hard time with, with higher power. I still struggle with that shit. But really it seems do. like anything else, like uh, the, a big biblical scripture and, and, and other type of rules that they've loosened over the years, that it's like, well, that's open to interpretation. The Constitution, that's open to interpretation. The Constitution, it's like, separation of church and state. This is one of the biggest breaches is people who... <laughs> get a DUI sentenced to go to AA meetings where they're forced to believe in God no, for six not, weeks. But that's well, that's the fucking just they're just trying to get people to do something so they don't <laughs> run they, families they over. They something other than AA. <laughs> they can. What, no, I mean, what, how can they have a judge sentence someone to go to <laughs> AA where the fucking okay, first you don't have to go, no, no, no. You don't have to go to AA. You can take the jail sentence for getting the DWI. You don't have to go to AA yeah, or any it, place. It's still bullshit. Why? You've given it's, it. No, you can't fucking tell someone that church is an option. You're right. So you, people should be forced to just go to jail. Fair. I'll go with that. I would. I would go that far with you. Okay. As long as they did something wrong while they were driving drunk. Um, you fucking don't put someone in jail for the unless they did something wrong. Oh, you, you don't like the gun. fact that if you own a gun, Ant. Yep. You could have fucking killed someone with that. You're fucking going to jail. Well, the well, idea of drunk driving is the crime, though. Just doing it. Even though you've done nothing wrong a, by yeah, drunk it's driving. A, it's kind of a douchebag move, but the libertarian side of my head says, well, if you're good at drunk driving, 
at the same time, again, these are bits I've done a million years ago, but an elderly person in Florida is fucking completely More legal licensed and uncoordinated. Then you have a NASCAR driver shit-faced that can... I want to... Fucking you guys do this. You have a radio show. You can make this happen. I've wanted to do it. Set up an obstacle course in a parking lot somewhere with a 90-year-old sober guy versus a fucking well-reflexed guy with cones and make them do the same him shit faced old guy sober <laughs> great and pick. see who it wins. Really do is. that. Don't be lazy. It really is a good one. We might have to finally Fucking do a radio do bit. Uh, Hold him to the fire. Doug, I've Listener. tried over the years to promote this where uh, the state has drunk driver's licenses. Where I, I, you, that's the bit. This you, is this is my oh, okay. this is a fucking you, 15 year old bit on you a take CD. a test, right? Yeah, a drunk driver, yeah. And you get you have you your limit the test is on point one seven. Right. It's on a CD. Wow, it is. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah. I've, I've thought that for years uh, I don't myself. Even, listen, but, call yes. in and tell me what CD that's on. <laughs> yes, I, I mean, know. that would be great. You just fucking, you pass for yeah, a certain I'm blood alcohol level. I'm the same as your contact lenses. I'm a minus 300 in my contact lenses. That's what I have to have in my right. head to drive. <laughs> I like that fuck, idea. It's... You could drive. I've only had like 14 really good points in my career. <laughs> and they're and that's on one of CDs. Them. And I'll tell you and something. No one listens. The past fucking almost like three weeks that I haven't been drinking, I've been the worst driver when I've driven to and from <laughs> my brother's house, parties. I'm, I take my Mustang out where I normally would take the Escalade. I'm driving 140 miles an hour down the expressway. I'm weaving in and out of lanes. Meanwhile, if I was been, if I had been drinking, I'd be center lane, 10 and 2, cruise control on. On, barely over the speed limit and drive home very nicely. I'm a shitty driver. I never drink and drive at all. Yeah. Under any circumstances, because I know I'm just a shitty driver anyway. Oh, know? okay. So I just don't. I'm very it's good the at same drunk reason driving. I don't own a very gun because I'm. I have small man complex. I get really angry. Yeah. I can see shooting someone in the wrong <laughs> state of mind. Like, oh, fuck you. Oh, I can get away with, oh, no, I shouldn't have done that. That's an odd thing, because when I get mad, like, and I get fucking mad on the yeah. road, like, people piss me the fuck off when I'm driving, and I'll yell, you fucking piece of shit, but I never, ever, it never even crosses my mind to go to my gun. To, like, pull out my gun and, and fucking wave it at someone's That's face. That's why you own a gun. I'm, I'm responsible <laughs> you would, enough. You would wave it around. You would be like, motherfucker. I, I can get into a state of where I think oh, I'm being attacked. <laughs> I think I'm being... Well, no, I'm just saying, like... I, right, right, right. Oh, yeah. this guy's I understand his point, though. He's down yeah. the street, and now he's outside of my house, and I know he's a tweaker. Well, now he's just walking by. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he's casing my joint. Like, so I can you, see how yeah, it yeah, would yeah. develop. <laughs> Probably. Probably not. But it's could, best I don't be have a issue. gun. Yeah, okay, that's it's responsible. It's best I just apologize in the morning for being a fucking asshole. That's responsible go, of you. That's good. I, I don't really have a case here. I don't think everyone should be armed either. So that's Kirshner, right. give me, tell me what developed as my attorney. Yeah, yeah. What, what might have developed because what, I, what I shot here? a guy and he probably didn't deserve it. After. Yeah, yeah, make up a good story, please. <laughs> yeah. Doug, we got a break just because we have a lot of live reads for oh, fucking Mother's Day. It. So uh, Doug's going to continue with my us. My mother's dead. Ha ha. <laughs> Mom died, right? When? Oh, yeah, she man. killed herself. It's on the new DVD. Oh, what was that? Did I, did I know that? Uh, I think in I did 2008, know. there was a statute of limitations before I could tell the whole story. Over. Oh, wow. Wait, can you tell us after the break a little bit? Yeah. I, I, oh. Yeah. Finger it a bit. Finger, finger it a bit. All right, I'll Doug will figure it that a, a little bit. He's going to be at BB uh, King's here in New York tonight. Fuck, that's cool. Washington, D.C. State Theater, May 9th, and then May 10th in Philadelphia. At the Trocadero. And I got to plug this weekend. Friday, Saturday, I'm at fucking Wise Guys in Utah. Ooh, Utah. Oh, fucking Keith Stubbs. I love that guy. Great I haven't club. seen him in years. Great fucking club. Dr. Drew and uh, Doug's mom's suicide after oh, the break. Jesus. <laughs> this, this is the OP and Anthony. Doug is uh, outside smoking, so hopefully somebody can Twitter him and tell him we're back on the air. Smoking. Yeah, Doug went over to for a chicks. Cigarette. What's that? Chicks. Yeah, there's a couple of lovely, uh, lovely girls walking down. <laughs> That's chicks. <laughs> You really think about it. That's a silly thing to call it a girl. Really is, yeah. Hey, look, chicks. What's the best one, you think? Gals. Gals, gals is Broad the sexiest. gals, chicks. Girls. Slits. I call it slits. <laughs> hey, that's slit. <laughs> Here's Doug. The skirt. And Adrian. Hey, escape. How's the cigarette, Doug? You know what? 
the last time I was here, mm. fucking Dice came in. All right. And just lit up a cigarette and took yeah. control of the room, motherfucker. You got gay, gay. What a pain in the ass, ass he no, was. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah. he can't, he went through the vents. And went through the vents, it was pouring out of the studio. I actually did a, uh, a, a pilot, I guess you'd call it. A try wannabe radio show for Sirius, <laughs> and it was late at night, and I'm smoking and drinking. I'm like, fuck this. Oh shit! Yeah, I didn't. <laughs> was it here? <laughs> I, yeah, in in these studios somewhere, late at night. That, I, I, was, I, I would listen to you on the radio. Huh? What's that? I think Di Stefano did it with me. Oh yeah. Did he really? Yeah, I think he was like wow. my. How long over... ago was that? Oh, Whatever happened to that guy? He had a heart attack. He died. Dead. My oh, just yeah, yeah. no, I'm still, oh, yeah, I oh my that. God, oh my Every, God, I'm It's so one of sorry. those things that no, I'm I thinking go, of the other I'm stealing Christy. from Norton, which was your, the whole, uh, the Colin Quinn show, Tough Crowd, Tough crowd. Oh, oh, stupid, yeah. you fucking stupid, it's you guys, it's mm. like, so it's a good word. Every time I say stupid, I'm like, I'm stealing from Jim Norton. You're not, though, it's like, I know, it's, but a, it's a great word, it doesn't get better, but I say, there's, there's scenes where people say, oh, Andy Andrus is trying to be like you. No, we're friends and we talk the same, mm. you, you, like there was a culture, when I started in Phoenix, there was a culture of the David Spade and everyone had that, uh, Ron Mori and, uh, Pablo, Pablo wasn't really part of that, but, uh. Mm. Yeah, they all kind of talked the same because they hung out. They sure. all hung yeah, out together. Yeah, you rub off on each other. Kind of out of breath. You're right, though. You rub off. We had off. a fucking moment in the elevator. Yeah. Worst business card ever. Tell me who that is. Uh. <laughs> Gypsy Joe something. I can't even read your business card. Gypsy Joe Hawking. It's 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 written in a darker font on oh, a darker. It was a band background. that was somewhere. In the building, I they just them. did a radio yeah. show. We got on the elevator together, and they had their equipment. I go, hey, how about a number? And they burst into song. <laughs> on the whole, it was fucking beautiful. It's caught on tape somewhere. Uh -oh. Please, yeah, <laughs> she was there. <laughs> Better be on tape. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so the I, I guy do, that was I do an elevator show now. I could have used that one. He's on for Sirius Radio was there, and he started filming. Oh, right on. And the whole thirty-six floors. You really got a hold on me. Wow. And, and the, it, it ended perfectly as the doors opened at the ground floor. And I'm like, that was fucking Fuck. magic. Oh, wow. Absolute number. magic. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. But they Some did. They the just bathroom. immediately plugged Fuck. in. They had an amp that you could plug into remote and just fucking burst into song. That's beautiful. The doors opened a couple times. People walked into yeah, a concert on the elevator. I, I do an elevator show. That's exactly Wait, what I'm looking that. for. Oh, man. I could have used that. <laughs> Is there an actual tape of it? If I, I was it. a younger comic, I'd go, hey, can we go up so I can do a set on the way up and we'll go down again? Yeah, do it's a not set. a bad idea, though. That's a good one. Yeah. That would work. No, comedy doesn't work like that. I, well, no, that's no, why, no, that's why it would be good. Back someone's head. That's a really awkward. <laughs> that's why it would be really from? good. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You're getting off of this floor? Yeah. So what we'll happened to your mom? What can you tell us? I, I know you oh, don't want to give away the whole bit. She was dying of emphysema. Right. And, no. uh, she was a, a lifetime out. smoker? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool milds mm. back when they made them. And then generics at the end. Mm. Some shitty brand. But yeah, she was drowning in her own fluids. and Yeah. Had to cash out. But she was sober. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if that was off the air. I, I asked only because you had said that she yeah. was sober, so I was like she hoping was that she was sober for like sober. twenty something years, and then somewhere I think two thousand three, four, whenever the Man Show was, I found out she had started drinking again, hmm. and uh, she hadn't told me; she was hiding it from me. And then uh, I know it was the Man Show. We were doing wraparounds for the Comedy Central, the Comedy Awards. Remember, they tried oh, to yeah, do yeah, an yeah, award yeah, show. Yeah, I do. And we filmed wraparounds on a cruise ship. So I took her on a cruise ship with me. I was working, and she was drunk and gambling. I knew she was drinking, and they flew us first class, which at that point, I've never even... F yeah. Ooh, first class. <laughs> Ooh, the big seats. And they had champagne they'd bring out. Oh, uh, so I like, Ma, you want uh, champagne with me? <laughs> like, so she could. I knew she was drinking, but oh, she didn't so like, know I knew. Stop hiding this, yeah, please. Yeah. Stop sneaking yeah, in. Yeah, so we got hammered, and it was great, and she just gambled the whole time. A woman who. In in real life, oh, I'm too uh, I'm too tired to bring my fucking groceries upstairs. Which oh, grocery, but you can man. gamble for seventy two hours straight. Something. Like I've fallen asleep, passed out, black <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're still at the slot machine. You have that. Yeah, you're, it really is an amazing thing when you're uh, gambling. Uh, you know, round the it's clock. Like cocaine for me. It could just go round the clock. And meanwhile, if I was home, I'd have taken fifty naps already. 
And uh, but I could if sit I get at a on table. a gambling jag, I really I'll chew through my cheek like I do when you do coke, and you're just yeah. jawing. Yeah. Yeah, it's the yeah. exact. It has to be the same chemical, you know, dopamine uh, uh, or whatever the fuck it is yeah. that your body sends out. Yeah, when it feels fun, good. I could stay up for fucking four days <laughs> just to beat be, this chink. That'll be a <laughs> that'll be a big test if I drink or not Ooh, at a blackjack I think table. That'd be tough man. because let me tell you, I've made some goes pretty together, good right? money. Because I was betting a lot, because I was drunk. Yeah. <laughs> right, but I, get, I, I that would actually be a good rehab. I've tried to figure out my own rehab. If I wanted to quit everything, jet skis. It boils down to jet skis. Really? <laughs> I remember when in the early days where I could not imagine going more than 15 minutes without a cigarette. That's why I started taking Xanax. On planes to sleep for the entire flight. Because you'd want to torture smoke. to not smoke on a flight, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and but there was a, a time where I was going through Lake Powell in Arizona on my way to Colorado driving, and I had time to kill, and I rented a jet ski by myself for two hours, and I just zipped around. Things are great. Fucking yeah. late. It was fantastic. Yeah. And I go, I never wanted a cigarette once. For two hours, I never thought, oh, I'm going to stop jet ski. <laughs> I have a cigarette. Right. And that's the, 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 the nebulous, like, if you wanted to quit something and not think about it, well, what is it about jet skiing? Like, the whole, what is it about that headspace, and how do you make that right, into something right. that you, you just got jet ski eight hours a day. Or just make people stay on the water all the time. Yeah. So they yeah, smoke yeah. and get wet. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, just fucking... <laughs> Plan some kind of heist like Heat with Robert De Niro. <laughs> well, I, they didn't. Oh fuck! Yeah, I'm gonna shoot out with the cops and Kevlar. I need a cigarette. Yeah, you're not thinking about. You that. would think that's a time you would want a cigarette, Probably. but they didn't think about that. No, no. those guys that actually did the Heat heist in right. L.A. Yeah. with the Kevlar helmets. That's and an shit. amazing scene. Uh, it's so, fucking fantastic. I need to they know. How, I need to cigarette. know how. I bet they were smokers. I need to know how your mom killed herself. Oh, yeah, her, well, uh, pills. She did. She went with the pills. Yeah, okay. the morphine. Oh wow! I, I don't want like it's one of those stories where you don't want to do the bit, but the bit is the story. Right, right, right. I think it's just an interesting story. Well, yeah. I'm sure on... she was. She knew it was time, and we knew she was going to get to a point. She wouldn't stop smoking. In fact, we had quit smoking for almost a year at wow. that point, and we. We're, we had a last cigarette with mother. <laughs> with when mother, she was killing herself. <laughs> oh my god! Like, <laughs> wait, were you around when she did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was around. Again, there's legalities where you go, okay, right, right, right. hey, this is a bit, by the way. It's just comedy. Sure, oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, you, you don't know. Well, let's I, just yeah. say this. Were you, were you shocked she, that she, she took pills, she or was, maybe did you suspect no, she was no, going well, to? Well, no, we, yeah, you have to yeah. help some people move. <laughs> some, yeah. Someone's going to move, and you have a pickup truck. You're going to help. Someone's your mother. They're going to kill themselves. You have to like do some research. I didn't buy her a shotgun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want I to clean that up. didn't resist the suicide so much as bar back it, because at that point, <laughs> that's where we were. She was, uh, f she had been four years sober at the end. She went off, oh, and she went. She again, an ugly drunk. Like she left a suicide, not even a note, but a post-it. We had a, we moved to Arizona. Holy I said, shit. Ma, we're gonna get settled in. We'll move you out. She can't be in L.A. by herself. She was like. She was 63. Her head was around. She just, her body was failing. Yeah, she was yeah. weak emotionally. So uh, she called up at like a month and a half after we moved to Arizona, like warbly drunk. I don't take it. I don't want to buy my burden. I'm going to kill myself. So we have to drive nine and a half hours to L.A. Oh, in the middle of the night, get God. there in the morning. She had a suicide post-it. Doug, I still have it. Doug, pain is too much. Wow. <laughs> Not That's even it. a whole letter. <laughs> Just, wow. Uh, so wow. We got her, yeah. So we get her out there. We so she rehabbed, but when she was going to kill herself, I'm going. You're not going to do this sober, right? <laughs> That's dumb. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You're ready to make this choice. I'll uh, you know I'll, I'll tie one on. That. Uh, 
Yeah. She's fucking drowning alive. The, how the how did she tell you she was going to kill herself? Was it a phone call? No, it was. Uh, we know what's going to happen. She, we, she's either going to die or kill herself. Right, right. Because she'd been life flighted to Tucson twice where they put a, like a suction thing into your lungs. Yeah. She was so addicted to painkillers at that point that when I went to see her, I had, one time we had to fly back from Costa Rica. They go, your mom's been life flighted the first time, and I went to see her at, at TMC, and uh, she's got the thing down in her lungs. She can't talk. There's a tube in her fucking mouth, and she writes down Vicodin, and I'm like, Jeez. what am I going to put him in the tube? And she nods. Like, that's not what? really an option. Wow. Holy fuck. And she's, uh, she was not a stupid... You've met my mother. Yeah, she, was, she was lovely. Yeah, she's... She, fucking, was in, she was in Vail the first time yeah, you met her. She's a fucking crazy truck driver mouth. Everyone thought she's adorable. Oh, your mother swears yeah. like a truck driver. <laughs> it's adorable. I remember a fucking quote from her at Vail, and uh, I think you were at the table. She always called you. She, he's like my son. I told him. One time, yeah, Ma. It's like he doesn't remember you. That was fucking 15 years ago. Wow. She, oh, James Inman. He's like my son. Yes, Ma. She, uh, I, you and I shared a room, and uh, you had all of your possessions. That's my my my, my most defining <laughs> mem right. memory of Doug is Doug with his, all of his possessions on his bed. Like he wouldn't put I anything. Lived on, I didn't on have him. a home. I lived out of my car. So. Yeah, you bring your wow. shit in. Wow, it's, it's just bringing it indoors, but not even in the drawers. Yeah, it was just all just on laid the bed. out. Yeah, wow, that is <laughs> a fast ninety-five. Nest. That's a fascinating story with your mom. That's amazing. And then you guys were around that actual day, or yeah, yeah. Well, she came to the house, and we I I laid down ground rules, uh, and this is in the bit, but it's true. I said because she had balked at suicide so many times over her life, just you know for uh, need for someone to hey I'm gonna I, 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 she tried to kill herself like with aspirin or whatever when she was young she'd talk about, but uh, so. I know it's serious, but at the same time, is this a ploy just to get sure. over to my house from your hoarder paradise <laughs> in the other side of Bisbee, Arizona? And so I said, uh, if you're going to kill yourself for real, uh, you can't do it Sunday or Monday because that's football. It's an actual conversation. <laughs> it's a conversation. Like, if you can you call your what? own time to leave yeah, this fucking world, you rules. don't do it during someone right. else's party on purpose just to be a dick. Right. Uh, and you have to do it two weeks from now because that's when my manager is coming down and he has no sense of humor about, oh, your mother's going to kill yourself. <laughs> so you, so I, I gave her a, a time period. Otherwise, uh -huh. you go back to... And yeah, she killed herself. It was Thursday she came in. She killed herself on the Saturday night. We watched Bad Santa together, favorite movie. And uh, she choked down 90 morphine tablets, and the details are. Wow. Yeah, and, and we made up white Russians. So she's choking them down with white Russians. We had a party. We fucking roasted her. We made fun of her. We made it into a goof. It was the most Jesus. beautiful death. Like, you know. Ma, wait, they found a cure. It's, a, it's one of the jokes, but it was an actual quote. <laughs> Holy and she's like giving us the finger, uh, like laughing. Uh, Holy shit, I'm blown away. Between I was a bad mother and then just laughing. And it was, you know, it was. What did a, you think the minute th that she shut down? Like when she yeah. finally closed her eyes and you knew it was done? Well, <laughs> it's, it's funny because we kind of shut down before she did completely. Oh, you passed out at a fucking 83 pound 63 year old woman fucking drank us under the table <laughs> where uh, where she, she's uh, like she was gone but she was still breathing and right, like, right and then we start playing music which she hated music but she's not there she's not bitching about it she's too right. far gone so we crank up some counting crows fuck you i like them <laughs> you do like the counting crows yes huh? and so, uh, yeah then we just like we're, we're then who do you call there's so many questions that's here. I don't know. Problem. I don't know I, I, what I you mean, want to talk the about. The saddest part is my mother at 63 had pushed so many. She hadn't. My we called my brother while she was doing it so she could say goodbye. He knows it's going to happen. Well, okay, it's actually happening. She calls my brother, <laughs> goodbye, and uh, there was no one else to call. She but I mean, oh, wow. so many people out of her life by being such a miserableist that there hmm. was nobody. How do you? How are you? Sixty-three years old, and you die. And I, uh, there was no obituary or gravestone. We gave her body to science, whatever fucking, you know, institution has the program where you don't have. Because I'm not 
fucking burying someone. It's dumb. <laughs> Paxton, Massachusetts, Except the for. fucking Boston bomber. We have a, a plot for you. Plug. So what? wait, <laughs> wait. My plug. I, I plug Doug Stanhope Celebrity Death Pool dot right. com. Please, that's another whole story. Most fun I've ever had gambling, but that's Doug Stanhope's. Go find that. And yeah. Bomber wait, 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 wait. So go. now your mom's dead. So who you call the next day? Oh, to, to, to yeah. take care of the I don't know business. what you want to talk about. So uh, shut me down anytime no, you no, want. No, no, this is, no. These, these are, the, the, like, the story is so detailed that when I tried to make it into a bit, it was just, all right, now there's 20 minutes of you talking about your dead mother. <laughs> Get to the point. Uh, but that was one of the funny things. Bingo, that w she came to our house, and they set up a hospital bed in hospice care, set up a hospital bed in the living room. So, And I had a friend that would change her catheter when I... Uh, because I am not touching my mother's vagina. Right. I, no. I don't have. Oh, no. I gave birth to you. Well, I didn't ask you to. Yeah, yeah. You. I'll get someone to do Plus, it. Plus, who needs to fucking realize at that moment, like, wow, this is fantastic. Eight point two percent unemployment rate in Cochise County. I can find someone to fucking change a foley bag. <laughs> a foley bag. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so when she's gone, but she's still like breathing. Oh, she's breathing, but she's gone. But she's breathing, and then oh, wow. we've been drinking white Russians with her, and we'd already taken Xanax before she decided it's time to go. Uh -huh. And we're like, oh, fuck. Finally, we pass out, and a caretaker called the the paramedics of a hospice patient has died. The paramedics came in and tried to take Bingo's body because she's passed out on the couch. <laughs> we have an L-shaped couch. So I'm on one side of the L. She's on the other. Right. My mother's in a hospital bed, and they go directly to Bingo thinking she's a corpse. Holy and, shit. And Holy I don't want to say her name, but our, the caretaker is like, um, it's her. And they, they were outside like like in like sheer blushing embarrassment that they accidentally went for the a living girl. Yes. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I was, I was gonna anyway, ask. caretaker stayed up through the night till she was dead. We were just like, all right, I'm tired of waiting for it. I'll crash. She'll be dead at some point. I'll wake up. Jeez. So we woke up to the paramedics taking right. her out. But emphysema would have been, like, that's why Kevorkian, I mean, it was just oh, you're drawing, merciful. You're drawing your own that fluids. Would have been a, yeah. Yeah. What exactly does it, I mean, I know it's, it's like being waterboarded. What, yeah. It just uh. stops your lungs from, from working? or it, from They can't it, pump the fluids anymore. You can breathe, but there's no oxygen getting into your system. Right. Yeah, it just gums up your fucking edema, <laughs> right? I guess the... I, uh, I think I it's officially it a demon. But it's an awful death. My dad was he my dad death. was heading that way, and he ended up, ended up dying in a car accident. But he was heading toward you know drowning in his own. That's fluids. what I'm hoping for, car accident. Because your Jeez. your heart your heart's too weak to pump out everything, <clears throat> and you start getting <clears throat> swollen and all that shit. Yeah, it's horrible, are horrible, horrible way to go, man. I quit ten years ago. I'm I fucking, I just had a moment of clarity on the radio show, and fucking I went down the comedy cellar. We were still smoking back then, and Esty, who ran the cellar. I'm like, I'm going to quit smoking. And she marched me to the fucking thing and got me the patch. And uh, it, for some reason, it, I, I did it the, the way the patch suggested over 21 days, and it worked. Like, I just drank a lot of fucking water, and I put some weight on, but... I'm fucking really You're, you're really hmm. good at following directions. Sometimes, I, you know what? <laughs> with some things I really am, with other things I've been absolutely atrocious. The yeah. things I follow directions on, you know, miraculously, they worked. And I stopped doing <laughs> the things I did it my way. Well, I'm still spending, you know, fucking three grand a week on fucking <laughs> oh, dude. No directions Is with it? them. So, yeah, it's terrible. So I'm so happy I have no sex drive whatsoever. <laughs> it's it's as freeing as you not smoking or drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really? Feel Nothing? Like not needing pussy. <laughs> it's it's been a, a a deficit when it what comes do you to attribute the act. That to? Like I don't work as much because I don't feel the need to be that good. What do you attribute the lack of sex drive to? What is it? I have no idea. Really? But it's it, yeah. It's you not with your there. girl or just in general? No, no. It's what. Uh, I don't want to say especially my girl, but my entire life, there's nothing that's uh, uh, like as more depressing that I fucked you already. Like the whole thrill of pussy for me was that I had like I got it, <laughs> like it was an accomplishment. It was knocking down all the milk jugs at the fucking carnival, you know. <laughs> Right, right, right. Three right. balls for a dollar. Oh, fucking, I got this one with one ball. I fucking nailed this. You don't have to do it again. Yeah, exactly. There, yeah. But there was an emptiness to the whole idea of fucking. I remember tripping. The only time I did mescaline in the desert 
where I'm, I'm thinking like that it's so sad when you're in love with someone and that's the first way you want to show them how much that you I I can't wait to mm. just fucking jizz all over your pubic <laughs> regions. <laughs> like it's the most beautiful feeling in your soul to be in love and the most disgusting way to display it. <laughs> like, so isn't right. there something else we can do? You're to, kind of right. Uh, God, other than have great. a wedding, some it doesn't, dumb shit. It really doesn't match up now, does yeah. it? Uh, just fucking that's loop really some funny. fucking <laughs> scum out of here. Yeah, I love right. you so much that I'm just going to pump this fucking fluid yeah. exactly some rubber fluid. cement into your belly yeah, button yeah, here. Yeah. i'm gonna cough up phlegm and uh. fucking spit it in an orifice of yours <laughs> fucking you've, stringy fucking... you've earned my spermatozoa <laughs> Yeah. My lumpies. My fucking Stringy. jizz. <laughs> what a great bit. Because then uh, you realize, like, wow, I didn't love you at all. <laughs> that's, oh, that's, that's the worst. Uh, I think Joe Rogan used to call it uh, post-cum syndrome or something. But that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. feeling, as, as soon as you come, it's not even done spilling out right. of you. And you're like, oh, oh, oh this is a problem. What did uh, I, oh, I'm going to What was I, wa what was I watching on TV before this got started? <laughs> yeah, you're like, because let me go right back to yeah. the television. Television. We got a we got a great if, question. If Norton and I just uh, did that same load, him on the pig's face and me on her ass, and made eye contact. I'd run for a bottle, and he'd go to a meeting to share. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'd make amends with her a few years well, later. Well, to just it. whack it out, and <laughs> we'd go on the air. Remember that one girl? No, yeah. I don't. I'd, I'd, apologize, I'd apologize for both of us. Like, you know, Doug would say he was sorry if he was capable. Uh, <laughs> we learned today there's two ways to look at it. Yep. Yeah. Hey, uh, Dane in Boston wants to know why comedians have addictive personalities. So many of the good I don't ones know that have. That's true. So many of the like good ones such do. Such a remnant of the fucking nineties. Being <laughs> even Attell quit drinking like five years ago, yeah. and that like, who's left? I think yeah. most comics I know are addicted to something, and, and maybe part of it is that there's a certain personality where you're always grabbing for shit, whether it's information or whatever. But there's also an availability and an acceptance, like with comics. Like who's a comic that's still fucked up? Not even fucked. I'm saying addicted. Addicted God. personality doesn't even mean just booze. A lot of them don't drink, but they, they, they still smoke. Could be sex, or it could sexually, be food. or gambling. Right. Like most people I know have something either in their past or in their present, and I think part of it is it, we, like nothing. Like, we're having this conversation about drinking and stuff, but Doug's drinking vodka, and in our job, I'm not like, oh, my God, Doug's drinking vodka. Like, no one gives a fuck. It's, no. all, it, it's a very accepted profession what, to do almost anything you want. But why is that? But that's also, I think, why a lot of people don't anymore. Like, okay, I did that. I don't do that anymore. Mm. Once I realized I could, like, when you can, there's a, oh, I can do that. It's like when you find out you can smoke in an airport. No, nothing makes me want to stop quitting smoking if I've quit, but you can smoke somewhere you shouldn't. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to do it this time. I'm in Denver. They have a yeah. smoking <laughs> lounge. I've come off the fucking smoking wagon, but I, I don't know many any comics that aren't addicted to something. If, if they're not actively drinking, they're still alcoholics who have quit. I don't know any that are fucking like I, really? I can think I, of. I know nothing but sober comics. I yeah, saw who's uh, still Craig, up. let's just yeah. say uh, a yeah. comic named Craig, and I was so happy he was drinking last night. I, he's in the green room. I'm like, oh, I don't want to feel like a dick because I was God, hammered last somebody's night. Somebody's drinking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't think of one guy. I'm sure there's a plenty, but I just don't know any that are close friends like Bob Kelly, sober. I mean, but he's still, you know. He, uh, Tom Rhodes, I know, is still a fuck up, but he's, uh, yeah. Oh, is he, he drank? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, well. he's a guy that I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Chris Sorry. Rock, I've never, I, I don't know Chris that well. I know him casually from the cellar, but I've, I've never seen him uh, doing anything that I could think of. I've never heard that he was a hard drinker or a gambler or anything. Mm -hmm. So unless he's got stuff, I just it don't know. It used to be like when I'd come to the city, I'd go to the cellar and because they have a table outside. You could smoke and I'd have cocktails and there'd be some comics hanging yeah. around drinking. Mm -hmm. And over the last four or five years, if I go down there, I'm just like I'm Solo. like a homeless guy. I'm like yeah. a, I'm busking for a fucking <laughs> drinking partner. <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, come on. Make me feel better about myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, Colin, yeah. I, I don't know how many years I knew Colin peripherally where I'd go, hey, you want to do a shot or something? He'd go, how many times do I have to tell you don't drink? I quit drinking a long time. He's like, yeah, the, yeah. He just seems like. He seems yeah. like the kind of guy that would be drinking. Colin has a still drinking voice. Yes. Like when you talk to Colin, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're yeah. like, he has to be fucking drinking. Drinking and smoking, it yeah. sounds like. Yeah, yeah. yeah.
He's a homeless guy voice. <laughs> Keith Robinson drinks at the cellar. Oh, there's not, there's yes. not as many guys because people are getting older. So as people get older, they not even addicted people. Just the process of elimination as you get older is people begin dropping dead, and that gives everybody a fucking like mortality check. Like you know, what I mean, like yeah. Geraldo. It's like you know, Geraldo is a fucking vital, brilliant comic, and like he's just gone. And you're like, Oof. but he was one of those revolving door oh, guys, yeah, as man. they yeah. call him in the yeah. program, yeah, where he'd he go fucking completely rehab, and then you're like, oh, you're, oh yeah, you did used to be a lawyer. I see that yeah. in you. Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> I never saw crazy him, but I do remember. Uh, I was really fucked up at Montreal. One of the times I did Just for Spite Festival, the first <laughs> time, and fucking that cunt guy that used to run it, he threw me out of a green room. <laughs> just long story. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, I was fucked up, and I'm, I just got chucked out, and I see Geraldo and a, two other comics, and I'm, I'm drunk, but I was right. That's one of the problems with being correct but drunk is if you're drunk and slurring, you look like you're wrong. Right, but no matter what you're doing. I was completely yeah. right. Just my motor skills. If I had cerebral palsy and I explained <laughs> the same story, I would get sympathy. But because I'm talking like this a bit, yeah, I'm slurring. But I was definitely yeah. right, and I had sober witnesses that corroborated the next day. But I'm trying to tell Geraldo <laughs> what just happened in this fucking green room with I can't remember that cunt's name, that guy that ran it. He'd come backstage and give you notes about your set and what? passive aggressively tell uh. you what you might do differently. Oh my God. You think this bit worked better? I like. I'm a fucking. Fuck you. I, I, I'm a veteran, you cunt. I'm not yeah, taking yeah, yeah. your advice. I don't. I'm not a new face. Anyway, Geraldo went. That reminds me of why I went to rehab. And I'm like, all right, don't fucking do that to me, you fucking uh, asshole. But, <laughs> just because I'm, uh, and right, then he right. died, and I took a little bit of, like, ha ha. That's why I fucking yeah. That's why I went to rehab. Uh -huh. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit! shit. I if you were there <laughs> last time, I saw Ron White. Yeah. Ron oh, White oh, was oh. there. Ron White is a comic who's still fucked up. Oh and boy, is fantastic it? Fantastic yeah. at it. Yeah, he's very funny. Yeah. Fucking. It rolls. It's like, oh, I, I have a friend in Bisbee that looks exactly like Charles Bukowski. The spitting image. And I have a friend that I started comedy with that lives in Seattle that looks just like Dr. Drew. And if I could put them together, if I knew that my Bukowski friend could act, I'd love to. What would fucking, I think we, we might have talked about this. Mm. What would fucking mm. Dr. Drew say to Hunter S. Thompson? Right, right, right. If yeah, you're yeah. fantastic like Ron White is, at he's he's made his disease, if you would as you would call it, his art. What would fucking Dr. Drew say to fucking Dean Martin? Um, I don't know. You can do this. It's a crutch. Like, come on. <laughs> fucking look at the icons of drug use, abuse, whatever you call it. Yeah. And what is Dr. Drew going to say to that? You want to see that? To you want to see fucking Hendrix on fucking celebrity rehab? Are you going to say <laughs> Dr. Drew does have some good points here? Probably, yeah, because he died at 27, so well, obviously no, he didn't know that much. <laughs> well, exactly. And you go, you know what? Yeah, you're doing kind of pop now. But we still love you, Jimmy. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, no, you could do that without the drugs. Okay, I, the new album's a little soft. <laughs> Jimmy's but trying it's to okay, rap. Because it's better to have you alive, Hendrix. Yeah. With Dr. Yeah. Drew. But uh. the thing is, it, Dr. Drew would be a dick for doing that if he went up to people who were performing right after a great oh, oh, you, show you and mean, said, hey, you, hey, you hey. randomly tweeting that Lindsay Lohan, he would have her arrested. You fuck, you want to go Dr. Drew? Yeah. He fucking tweets that if I, I would have her arrested to save her from herself, like saying set her up and put her in prison. He's offering unsolicited advice to stars all the time, talking about them. He's on every fucking news show talking about, oh, this is what they have to do. You're a doctor. You're not their doctor, you fucking asshole You're, he is doing that, that but that's where he's that's where he's like the celebrity thing and i get that and that's what he would do to hendrix but lindsay, lindsay lohan he would should be arrested because she's fucking she's, the, the thing is i think the point with lindsay lohan is she's fucking anybody else would get arrested for doing that shit she's fucking just ignoring court order after court order and he's fucking this pussy prosecution they won't do anything about mm. it so she should be he arrested because she's breaking the law that she be fucking set up and put it like yeah just go to rat her out basically but did I he say set, set up intervention did he, did he say set up or did he say just for, I, for breaking I, I, the court I, I, again i, I okay. it was to that effect i'd have to make him go back to the fucking google net to make sure <laughs> google net
Again, we're comics. I don't have to be factually accurate. This is not a court of law. But the gist of it, if I found it, would be, yeah. That's he was, the gist of it. He had, to, he had to actually publicly right. come out and go, that's not what I was suggesting. He had to actually mm. you know, take it back. Right, right. Take it Jesus. back, Drew. Take it back. Okay, take that one back. I didn't really mean specifically. <laughs> Well, we're at the end of the show here. Oh those my no, God. we're not. This show goes on. Well, the it goes on with Sam. One shot of vodka. If you have a juice or a soda mixer, Sam will continue with you with the, the after, after show. show with Sam Roberts. Second. And he does a great up. job. I've never been invited to the fucking uh, oh the after God. party at Please. the Stern thing. They, oh no, they don't like me over there. Why hey, not? how do you guys? I wanted to ask great. just randomly. Mm. What do you guys think about Phil Hendry? I like Phil. I fucking think Phil is I like is, Phil Hendry a lot. I, I, I had him fantastic. over here in a second if we could figure that out. Every time I'm on radio, there's such a braggadocia in radio yeah. that you, if you, you, you're you afraid to bring up another sure. radio. Oh, no, yeah, I, I know. What That's so like, fucked you wouldn't, up. Yeah. Phil, Phil hey, Hend- how dare you mention Patrice? I'm here. Don't Phil Hendry is that. brilliant. Yeah. Phil Hendry is he's one brilliant. of the fucking driving on the road, which we've been doing. He has, Now he has his show as a podcast, right. which is fucking... And I, have, like, I love an eight-hour drive between gigs just listening to fucking Hendry. I've never heard Best him. I've heard other than I heard he's great. great. Fucking absolutely. He's, it's had, not, it's, he's crazy. He it, has to it be crazy to pull off. With, because it's, yeah, a, yeah, it's, it's a totally show. Different. Right. Well, it's completely unique. It's a, no yeah, one is doing anything. Yeah. On the right. air no one is doing anything close to what he's doing. And right. the no, 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 no. He, he's the straight guy. He's the guest. And then he's the callers. No, no, no. The goof is the callers that are just. He mixes them in. There's, oh, real, he'll, he'll there's real callers. Into, right, right. But the, the whole goof is he has the guest has the most outrageous. I believe that the uh, I'm, we're, have a petition drive to get the names of the 9-11 hijackers on the memorial wall because they did <laughs> yeah. die as well. Right. Are you telling me? So he's doing this ventriloquist right. act where he's the most. And it's the, the goof is the people who don't know it's a goof. Oh, yes. my calling God. In. Calling I'm in. outraged. Right. I've never heard this show before, but I'm outraged. How does and he he'll get them on a ramp it up? How does he get those casual people on the podcast? Now? That's got to be no, hard. No, to... no. It's a podcast is the best of oh, the radio. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Show, yeah. So, yeah, I, he's a legendary great. guy. I've just never listened to his show. I've, I've heard he's really, really great. There are times he's the callers as well. Uh, yeah, so, no, yeah. He'll, he'll do that. He'll be he'll use other guests. Right, I, I know him by it's, heart now. Yeah, it's unbelievable. But, yeah, he'll, he'll 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 do like two characters at once with the guest. He, yeah, and for the longest time, he didn't tell anyone that he was doing the guests. You know. He just wanted people to believe this was an actual person. Now he doesn't care as much. Well, now he's on, like, fucking... And the word's out, but it still 11 works. 11 to 1 Pacific Time syndicated on AM. Mm-hmm. Why such a weird... Was there just not a call for what he did anymore, or what happened? No, they just wanted that fucking well, he has bullshit to, radio. The, the, the only way it works is if he's on a station that is AM talk radio. Exactly. Where it, that's not the market for comedy. Uh-huh. Right? So... Uh, yeah, he's, I don't. I don't know why. Wow, yeah. All I know is fucking. He's, he's got brilliant. 15 years of backlog shit on the. He owns it all. Right. So he's smart. Just tell me to leave because I just keep. No, talking. Cool. no our show's done. But Doug, Doug Stanhope is, on Twitter. Yes. Doug Stanhope tonight at the BB King. The, the cemetery plot. That's a for real offer. <laughs> if anyone has gotten back to me, DougStanhope.com. Contact me if you want to bury a terrorist in Paxton, Massachusetts, where those cocksuckers deserve. You got one. some real estate. Here it is. Got it. Plot is waiting. Bought and paid for. Yes. Anyone else? I think that's it. I'll be in Utah Friday, Saturday, and uh, Jacksonville the week after. Ooh. Jacksonville is cool, too. I've never done that gig. Never been to Jacksonville? No, I canceled it once for for TV or something, and uh, now that I'm looking at ticket sales, I'm like, why did I ever cancel this? Oh, okay. <laughs> Here we go again. Oh, oh, I didn't sarcasm. play in that club. The Comedy Zone? Oh, uh, I, think I, so. I played that once like when we met that back then. Yeah, but I went back and played a, my own gig. Fucking I, great scene. I probably should great have done guys. that. One fucking, one available ticket after another. Oh. Lining up. Lots of available tickets. Oh, it hurts. <sighs> Doug, this was great. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Yeah. Always love having you in. I'm Absolutely. always fucking drinking from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Stanhope, everyone. <laughs> Fuck. The Opie and Anthony show is pretty much over. Pretty much over. Pretty much over. This show will be available later today with Sirius XM On Demand. After 1A Live is next. 
We're reorganizing things to make it easier for you to discover what you like to listen to. And so you can find brand new channels starting this Thursday. Sirius XM is bringing you a new and improved channel number lineup. The Opie and Anthony channel will be moving to XM 103 on Thursday, May 9th. The channel will remain on Sirius 206. And don't forget, tune to XM 103 starting Thursday, May 9th for the Opie and Anthony channel. To get a new customized channel guide, just go to SiriusXM.com today.